When you're playing rec play or tournament play or just with your friends, are you tired of popping that ball up so they could just smack it in your face? Welcome back to Pickleball Journey. For those of you new to the channel, we do all things to help you on your journey to get better. Today we are bringing four tips to help keep the ball low. I'm Justin. I'm Elisha. Let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna go right into that first mistake we see people do when they're popping up the ball in general. So we're gonna notice mistake is, is people take the ball too low, right? So when we're looking at the trajectory of the ball and the ball bounces and then hits its apex and then comes back down again. A lot of people let that ball bounce, hit its apex, and it comes back down again and they're hitting it at their ankles or below their knees. This, hitting the ball this low makes us have to hit the ball up. And a lot of times what we do is we hit the ball up too hard in many cases, or we think it's so low that we have to snap our wrists a lot, and all of a sudden we're popping the ball up and it's, we're getting smashed on. So in ball position wise, when the ball is bouncing, let's work to get in position so that the ball is at its apex, and then we're hitting the ball a little bit higher so we can swing more through it versus up so we can keep the ball low at the opponent's feet. This next tip is gonna be quicker to fix than it is for you to smash that like button. So let's get right into it. Too often we see people uh, popping the ball up because they're snapping their wrist up. So they do this both on the forehand, snapping it up, and the backhand, you're snapping that wrist up. What we wanna do instead is you really wanna think about being as smooth as possible when you're hitting the ball. This is gonna help you keep it lower and avoid these pop-ups. You're really mostly keeping that wrist locked and you're really thinking about being smooth as you hit through it. But then another thing to think about is try keeping that ball on the paddle as long as you can. Now it might seem tough because it's just a millisecond longer than you would, but the more you think about it, this really helps me out. This helps out people I coach. The longer you keep that pat the ball on the paddle, helps you make those balls and keep it a little bit lower. All right, so we've been through the paddle with the flicking of the wrist that Justin was talking about. We've been through keeping, we're making sure we're hitting the ball at that apex. This third tip is making sure that our face of our paddle is at the proper angle of openness, right? The paddle face controls the height of the ball always, right? That's just physics. So the more open your face is, the more the ball goes up. The more closed your face is, the more the ball goes down. We have a tendency to open the face too much. That's the mistake is that people, when they hit through their shot, whether it's a drive, whether it's a dink, their paddles are too open. And what we're gonna, the, how we're gonna fix that is all we're doing is we're just turning the face closed with our wrist, right? We're not changing our grip at all. We're just using our wrist to turn the face a little bit more closed so that when we move through the ball, the ball goes lower over the net, right? And you can always practice this, try to make adjustments. If the ball's going high, we're just adjusting that face. Most people think it has to do with how you're swinging through the ball, but it's not correct. I could swing down on the ball with an open face and the ball will still go up and I could swing up through the ball with a closed face and the ball will still go down. So make sure that you're adjusting the paddle face with your wrist when you're trying to figure out how high you're hitting the ball and how low you're hitting the ball. All right, so our final tip to keep the ball lower is bringing in spin. So Elisha just talked about paddle face and controlling the height of the ball. We're controlling spin by our swing motion. So if I swing high to low, then the ball's going to have slice on it and it's going to sit up a little bit higher. We'll see this be more common at the you know lower levels maybe where they're hitting low to high and they're hitting slice on the ball. When the ball lands, often it'll sit up a little bit higher. If we want to create topspin, our trajectory for the paddle, again, we're not really changing the face much, but our motion is coming from low to high. So I'm not, you know, I'm not really coming over the ball. This isn't like tennis or ping pong where we're getting a ton of spin. Yes, the technology has improved, but really we're getting a lot of our spin from that low to high motion. And think of it like this. If you've got the net here and I want to get the ball over the net, I'm just taking the ball and I'm lifting it over the net. 
that's on a small scale as you go back and you practice this uh, from anywhere in the court thinking low to high to create a little topspin which can bring the ball lower are you in pursuit for the best paddle get engaged with engage see the description for 20 percent discount you know i'm wearing down these shoes i don't know if you can see them here but uh, i love it that i can go on promise they've got shoes gear all kinds of stuff 10 percent discount see the description below do it